This exhibition delves into the working process of Edward Hopper through his drawings. What's unique is that um, perhaps uh, the way we see him picking apart a subject matter in great detail, thinking about things in a very narrow way in a sense that he would look at one thing and look at it from a different angle and a different angle and a slightly different angle. Part of the nature of this exhibition is to, to show the depth within a, sort of a single idea. This is the opener of the show, as it were, and they're all self-portraits in a sense. Hopper, when he got older, he rarely depicted himself. He only did one painted self-portrait, which is in our collection, and, and these two drawings that we know of. Um, one of them is dated to 1945, Valentine's Day, February 14th. He uses all his skill as a draftsman to, to both bring forth his sort of reserved personality, which I, th I think you see really well in these. But then it's interesting that he, that he did these other types of drawings, which um, were done at different times, but they show his awareness of his craft as an artist. You see his hand, which is the tool you're using when you're a painter or a draftsman or an artist like Hopper, and it's the combination of your hand with your mind that leads to being an artist, and that's what you have here with his hat on his printing press suggesting his intellect. This is Nighthawks, this is Hopper's most famous painting, and one of the points of this room in particular is to show Nighthawks with the Whitney's Great Painting early Sunday morning. And it's my feeling that Hopper thought about these two paintings together, even though he did them over 10 years apart, because they're both about urban subject matter, they're both the same size and format roughly, and they kind of um, complement each other in terms of one's about, one's a night scene, one's a day scene. This one's quite striking because it's, it's almost like these people are in an aquarium and we're looking from the outside and it adds to the kind of voyeuristic tension of the work. His work in many ways is intentionally about ambiguity and he's not trying to present you with a resolved narrative, he's presenting you intentionally with an unresolved narrative because he wants you to have fun playing it out in your own mind. This is perhaps my favorite painting, or it's become my favorite painting by Hopper in the course of this exhibition. There are 54 studies on 52 sheets of paper for this painting, which is about three times as many studies as normally exist for a Hopper painting. He talked about painting being a struggle, perhaps because the interior was fairly complex and he wanted to get it right because it was in one, in one of these kind of neo-baroque movie palaces. You can see how carefully he studied individual details from down to like the, the shape of a leaf on, on this ornate gilt column to the, the pattern of swirls on the carpet. I mean, very, very specific things. So perhaps there were more elements like that than normal in this painting that he wanted to get right. The mantra I keep saying over and over again with this exhibition, and it comes from Hopper himself, is that he, he worked from the fact, basically drawing something from observed reality. And then he called improvisation his imaginative interpretations of, of reality. And memory, in a sense, to filter the subject matters that interested him, so that in some cases the work itself becomes about the thought process, the nature of memory, the idea of, of looking back on something and reinterpreting it in your own mind.